welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie and this is Let's Talk About It. So today I am here with Scrooge's melancholy meal that he had on Christmas Eve. Um, melancholy means sad because Scrooge was sad and cheap. But we're going to take this melancholy meal that he had and we're going to make it not so melancholy. And if you don't know who Scrooge is, he is the main character from The Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, where he is like a little son of a gun that doesn't like to share his money. He has lost the true meaning of Christmas, and he is about to get visited by the three ghosts to help him get back into the spirit of Christmas. But on Christmas Eve, he has a meal that he thinks makes him sick, and that's why he was hallucinating when he's seen these ghosts. So that Christmas Eve after work, he went around to the townspeople and collected on all the debts that he was owed. He then stops into a melancholy tavern and has a melancholy dinner. And then he goes and collects on his debt from the soup man, which is cooking split pea soup. And he offers Scrooge some soup to help him buy some time before he can pay off his debt. And Scrooge accepts, not without giving him a little fee for or giving him that break. What a Scrooge. Anyways, he gets back to his house and he gets a visit from his old partner, Jacob Molly, which is dead. He doesn't believe his eyes and he thinks he got sick from his dinner. And this is where we get what Scrooge had for dinner that night. You don't believe in me, do you? No, I don't. Why do you doubt the evidence of your own eyes? Because I, I've had a slight stomach disorder. It has undoubtedly affected my vision. You're an hallucination. Probably brought on by a, a, an undigested bit of beef, or, or a blubber mustard, or a crumb of cheese. Or an old potato. Yes, that's, that's what you are. You are an old potato. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to start with the split pea soup. It's pretty straightforward, but I did add a couple of different ingredients just to spice this recipe up in case you already know how to make this soup. So here are all the ingredients you're going to need to make this soup. We have some celery, a whole, we're going to use the whole thing, some salt and pepper, this whole big piece of ham with the bone, carrots, lemon, about four or five onions depending on the size, a whole bottle of cooking wine, two bags of split peas, one green, one yellow, some parsley, some Goya ham flavoring, and garlic. And lastly, I have this big sprig of time for the seasoning first step is you're going to soak your split peas you're going to take them and you're going to put them in a bowl with warm water just to let um them rinse and then you are going to drain them okay so the next step is getting the ham bone out of the ham we're going to save the ham to add in last but we need that bone because it's very important to make a split pea soup with the bone it's not necessary but it definitely makes the taste so 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 much better and just like it gives it a nice fullness so after you're done you're gonna end up with the ham bone i didn't go too close to the bone because that ham will fall off into the soup once it's been boiling for a long time Next, take all your celery, wash it, and chop it. Next, I took about 10 carrots, peeled them, and chopped them. Take your onions. I did four because they're large, and chop them. Okay, almost done here. You're going to take your garlic. You're going to cut off the hard pieces on the bottom, and you're going to chop them. Okay, so now we're on to the two lemons. First, you're going to zest. You want to take everything out of a lemon because it's very, very valuable to food. It brings out the taste in all of your food and makes everything just a bit more brighter. So make sure you use the zest because that's where most of the, the good flavor comes from. And then you're going to juice your lemons. I did two of them because I did a double soup. But if you're just doing one soup, you can just do one lemon. And then lastly, you're going to chop your parsley as small as you can get it because you don't want to have parsley stuck in your teeth when you're eating soup uh, I got it I got it pretty small it could be smaller than that if you want it smaller so now we're over the pan and you're gonna put your oil in the pan I'm using olive oil 
and warm that baby up. Once you get your pan nice and hot, you're going to add your mer pois, which is the French word for onions, celery, and carrots. You're going to give that a quick stir, and then you're going to put the cover back on and let that sweat on medium heat for about 10 minutes just to get everything just a little bit softer, but you don't want it to be fully cooked yet. After about 10 minutes, you're going to take your pan off and it's sweating real good right now. Give it another quick stir and then you're going to add your garlic you don't want to add your garlic too early because garlic cooks extremely fast and you just don't want it to be um spent before it's time then you're going to add some salt and you're going to add a little bit of pepper for taste right now and then you're going to let that sweat for another five minutes give it a little stir before you do that Next, I took all eight packets of my Goya ham seasoning and I dissolved it in water and put it to the side. Now it's about time to rinse the split peas and then add them to the pot. Next, you're going to add your ham bones, your bottle of cooking wine, your ham flavoring mixture will go into the pot next, and then all your water. You're going to do... 16 cups of water because this is a double soup and then add your thyme right at the end give it a little stir and then cover it for about 20 minutes check it stir it make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom everything's still pretty al dente to say the least still going here that was probably another i don't know 20 minutes i added in my lemon zest and my lemon juice and then you're going to give that a quick stir and then take out your sprig um, stick so you don't have, you know, you're not chewing on that later. And then it's going to be starting to cook big time, cook down. So you're going to take out your bones, add your chopped ham now, and then give it a little stir and then let it cook for about 10 minutes. There is a few steps at the end, you know, like you have to let it cook and then add. Your last step is you're gonna add your parsley, saving a little bit for garnish. And this is what it's gonna look like, guys, when you're done. You don't want your peas completely exploded and mushy. You want them to have a little bit of form to them because the more you heat it up, the more they're gonna break down through the week and then you'll, add, you'll end up with like paste. So you don't want that. Add your last of your parsley for a little bit of presentation and dig in guys this soup was really 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 good i love the lemon it looks beautiful it's a beautiful beautiful soup okay so on to what he had in his melancholy tavern in the book it says he had some beef with mustard and some potatoes with gravy and cheese so that's what we're gonna make i didn't have specifics so what i did was i bought a three pound roast and decided that's what I'm going to use for the beef. I preheated my oven to 350 degrees and I seasoned it with garlic and like Lowry's I think we use for this. And then we put some onions and some more thyme on there and then a little bit of oil and then a little bit of wine. We used red wine. Uh, I think that goes best when you're cooking any beef um, yeah and then we put a bouillon in a beef bouillon for some salt and that's what it looks like oh we did add some sage in there i forgot all about that then you just cover it and you put it in the oven for 90 minutes okay so while that's cooking i'm going to work on the potatoes so in the book he said he had potatoes with some gravy and crumbs of cheese so to me that sounds like poutine so i've decided to make potatoes instead of french fries for the poutine i got the small ones because they're easy to cook and i cooked them halfway and then smashed them like this on a cookie sheet then I melted some minced garlic in some butter and I painted each potato with this amazing mixture. Next, you're going to put it into a 350 degree oven and bake for 25 minutes. Next, we are going to make the sauces. This is the sauce to go on top of the beef. It was a blot of mustard. So I looked up a mustard sauce and this recipe sounded pretty good. So it called for a cup of sugar and two eggs on one side. And in the other bowl, you're going to do a half a cup of white vinegar and two tablespoons of dry mustard powder and i did two tablespoons of the mustard seeds 
um, the ones that you can get to put on like crackers and cheese. So here you want to whisk it and then you're going to put it in your pan on medium heat and then whisk really fast and don't go very slow like keep on going fast on medium heat or you will end up with scrambled eggs and you do not want scrambled eggs now you're going to add your mustard mixture slowly to your egg mixture in the pot stirring very vigorously and not stopping because again you do not want to turn these into scrambled eggs now the egg is going to work as a thickener for your sauce so you're going to notice after a while that your sauce is going to get thick and there is no flour in here just the egg so i thought that was pretty neat and your last step with that sauce is just add a little Worcestershire because it tastes so good. Next, you're just going to make your gravy for the potatoes, which is just a basic gravy using the gravy mixture. Or you can make any gravy you like to make, but I'm using just a regular basic brown gravy. Very easy because everything else in this video took a little bit um, to, to create. So this was a nice little break for me while cooking and that literally thickens up within a couple of minutes and then you just set it to the side okay so now it looks like our roast is just about ready but you need to let this roast sit for 15 minutes before you do anything with it or your roast will bleed out and you don't want that you want all the flavor to stay inside of your roast so don't be impatient. Let it sit. So ours has been sitting for almost a half hour because we were busy making other stuff. But it is about ready to cut. And I'll show you what it looks like inside after about 90 minutes of cooking. It is medium. I feel like that's medium. It's not medium rare, but it's definitely medium. It's got that pink in the middle, but it's all um, cooked, which is just how I like my meat. Now our potatoes are just about done they are golden brown and it's time to make the poutine and you want your potatoes to come out last because you want your poutine to be very very hot i remember the first time i had poutine i think i was about 17 i used to go out clubbing into the city near my house and after the clubs all the restaurants would serve all the drunk people poutine which was french fries brown gravy and cheese curds and when i was younger i thought that was so yummy so that's why i decided to turn scrooge's melancholy potatoes into poutine those are the cheese curds you can get them at your grocery store leave them cold put them on cold and then you put the warm gravy over it and it's just one of the best snacks you could ever make for yourself if you're not going to have it with your dinner. And then here we are trying it. It's so good. We put the mustard gravy on the beef. It's perfect. Everything was so perfect. This meal was not melancholy. It was very good. I feel bad for Scrooge that he decided to settle for a sad meal when he could have done this. So guys, thank you for joining me for day 21 of Vlogmas. What did you think of this meal? Do you know Scrooge? Do you like Scrooge? And will you make this meal at home? Let me know in the comments below. So guys, if you like this video, please press like, subscribe, and I'll see you later.